Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In the last lecture, we saw that in a finite dimensional space, we can use an ordered basis to convert or encode or digitize every vector into a concrete vector in Fn. So, we have V, a finite dimensional vector space over F, dimension of V is N then x belongs to v can be digitized. For this we need some digital equipment and that equipment is our basis. So, b equal to u 1, u 2, u n and ordered basis for v. Then every x in v has a unique representation as a linear combination of these basis vectors. Then we construct the vector in F n and call it as x b and that is this vector x 1, x 2, x n and x i is called the ith coordinate or component ith component of x with respect to the ordered basis B. Now, we have seen suppose we have two ordered basis B equal to u 1, u 2, u n and B prime is u 1 prime, u 2 prime and u n prime. So, both are ordered basis for B. Then, if you take a vector x in v using the ordered basis b, we can convert it to a vector x b in f n. On the other hand, if we use b 1 or b prime, if we use b prime, then we can convert the vector x in v to the vector x b prime in f n. If you now look at these two vectors x b and x b prime, these are two different vectors in f n, but they have all they have both emerged <coughs> from the same original vector x in v and therefore, we expect that since they represent the same vector there must be some connection, there must be some relationship between x b and x prime. Since x b and x b prime represent the same vector x, we expect them to be related. In some way, an algebraic relation because everything is algebra here. So, what is this relation? What is this relationship between these two representations? So, if we have the same vector represented in two different ordered bases the two representations must somehow be connected with each other because they come from the same original vector. We are trying to explore and find out what is this connection between these two. Obviously, the connection must come from the connection between the basis B and basis B prime because these are the two fellows taking them into two different vectors. So, the connection between B and B prime will establish the connection between X B and X B prime. So, we must now look at the connection between X B and B prime. 
obviously, so we write obviously this connection, this relationship will depend on the relationship between between the two ordered bases B and B prime. Now, therefore, we must ask how do we find this relationship? How do we find this relationship? So, let us again uh, look at these two bases B is u 1 u 2 u n B prime is u 1 prime u 2 prime u n prime. Now, we have seen that any vector x in V can be converted to a vector in f n through the basis B prime as x b prime that connection is what we, that conversion is what we is denoted by x b prime the digitized version or the encoded version in f n. Now, we now apply this transformation or this digitization using the basis b prime for the b vectors. So, in other words I can take x to be u 1 u 1 is certainly in v. So, I can use b prime so, I should get a vector in f n which is representing u 1 in the basis b prime. Since, this is a vector in f n let us denote it by b 1, b 2, b n and in order to make sure that we do not forget that we are representing the first vector in the b basis we will put an additional index here 1, the second index denoting that we are looking at the representation of the first vector in the B basis. Similarly, if we now take u 2 that can be represented in the B prime basis as a vector u 2 B prime in f n and that vector again we represent it as b 1, b 2, b n. There will be a second index 2 in order to ensure that we are talking about the second base vector. So, in general if you take u j the jth vector in the b basis you can use the b prime basis to represent it as u j b prime as a vector in f n and that vectors component are b 1, b 2, b n and the second index j says that we are looking at the jth vector in the we are looking at the jth vector in the b basis. So, what we have done is we are looked at the basis b and each vector in the basis b is now converted into an f n vector using the b prime basis. Now, we have how many vectors in f n? There is one vector in f n corresponding to u 1, there is one vector in f n corresponding to u 2 and there is one vector corresponding to u j for every j between 1 and n. Therefore, we get n vectors in f n. What are these vectors? The representation of u 1 in the b prime basis, the representation of u 2 using the b prime basis and so on, the representation of u j using b prime basis and so on, the representation using u n and the b prime basis. So, thus we get n vectors in f n, we put them all together in the form of a matrix, the first column of which is 
the representation of u1 in b prime basis the second column of which is the representation of u2 in b prime basis and so on so now we construct a matrix and it will have n columns and each column is in fn so it will have n rows so it will be an n by n matrix since all the entries are from f so it will be an n by n matrix in fn cross n as follows its first column is u1 b prime its second column is u2 b prime its jth column is u j b prime and so on is nth column is u n b prime. Now, if you look at the components we have already got, we got the u 1's component as b 1, b 2, b n, we put the second index as 1 to say that we are looking at the first vector, then we got the components of u 2 as b 1, b 2, b n and we use the second index 2 to say that we are looking at the vector u 2 and so on and so forth and when we come to u j we have b 1, b 2, b n and the second index j and so on and finally, b 1, b 2, b n and the second index m. So, this is the n by n matrix that we construct these are all the components of the b basis vector in terms of the b prime basis vector. So, let us call this matrix as it is b basis vectors in terms of the b prime basis vector. So, we will use the notation b sub b prime. So, it is a representation of the b basis in terms of the b prime basis how does this help? At least this gives you a compact digitized version of the relationship of the b vectors in terms of the b prime vectors. This is what we were looking for, we were saying that the two representations of a given vector in terms of the b and b prime basis will obviously depend on the relationship between the b and b prime basis. Now, we have captured in some form the relationship between the b and the b prime basis. Now, let us take any vector x in b. So, consider a vector x in b. We know that any vector x in b has a unique representation in terms of the basis vectors. So, let us represent x in terms of the b basis it is x 1 u 1 x 2 u 2 plus x n u n that is the representation of x in terms of the b basis. This means when we digitize or we find the corresponding vector x the coded version in f n that has to be formed out of these components. So, it will be x 1 x 2 x n. On the other hand, we also have x, if we write this in simple to save time or to compact notation, we will write it as x j u j. Now, we have seen that the u j is precisely having this representation in the b prime basis that means u j is b 1 j u 1 prime b 2 j u 2 prime b n j u j prime. So, this will tell me that is equal to summation j equal to 1 to n x j u j can be written as i equal to 1 to n b i j u i prime because now we are representing in the b prime basis the b basis vectors in terms of the b prime basis. There is a double summation and everything is finite sum. So, you can rearrange the summation and write it as i equal to 1 to n 
summation j equal to 1 to n b i j x j into u i prime. So, I can write this as i equal to 1 to n some alpha i times u i prime. So, that says x can be expressed as a linear combination of the b prime basis vector with the coefficients of alpha i. So, therefore, the representation of x in the b prime basis must be alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha m. But we know we have represented it as x 1 prime u 1 prime plus x n prime u n prime I am sorry x as we can rep we use, use the notation x is equal to this and hence x b prime must be x 1 prime x n prime. On the one hand we have x b prime as alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha n on the other hand we have x b prime as x 1 prime x 2 prime x n prime and that says that the vector alpha 1 or the vector let us put it this side the vector x 1 x 2 x n prime must be the same as the vector alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha n. So, <coughs> comparing this representation here and comparing with this representation here <coughs> we get this x 1 prime x 2 prime x n prime must be alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3. But now if you look at alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 <coughs> if you look at alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 we we called this entire sum as alpha i and therefore, we get this is the same as summation if you look at this it will be T B 1 1 let us put it this way B 1 I x B 1 j x j j equal to 1 to n B 2 j x j j equal to 1 to n and so on summation j equal to 1 to n B n j x j with it is simply uh, the product of the matrix B B 1 and the x B. So, thus we get x B prime is B B prime times x B. This gives us the connection between the representation of this vector x in terms of the basis B prime and the representation of the same vector x in terms of the basis B and the connection is through this matrix which is a compact form of representing the relationship between the basis B in terms of the basis B prime. So, thus we get x B prime is equal to B B prime x B which is the connection between x B prime and x B which we were looking for. Similarly, if we interchange the roles of B and B prime interchange roles of B and B prime we get x B will be now we have to represent the B prime basis in terms of the B basis and here will be x B prime. So, we can knowing the representation of x in terms of the basis B you can get the representation of x in terms of the basis B prime by the connection between B and B prime and knowing the representation of x in terms of the basis B prime we can get the representation of x in terms of the basis B by connecting B prime with the B basis. Combining these two results, if we now sub, if we substitute uh, 
for x b prime from here we get this is b b prime into x b. So, therefore, what we get is x b is equal to b prime b into b b prime into x b and this is true for every x belonging to b. Now, we leave it as an exercise to see that take okay, let us make that simpler or call this matrix let b prime b remember this is an n by n matrix times b b prime which is also an n by n matrix call this matrix as k. Then we have x b is equal to k x b for all x in b. So, if you take any x in b and look at its representation in the b basis it is the same as k times its representation in the b basis and we expect therefore, k is identity. So, exercise take x equal to u 1 conclude first column of k is 1 0 0 0 0 and in general take x equal to u j and conclude jth column of k is the mid is the column 0 0 etcetera until you come to the jth stage and all are 0. This is the jth entry, the jth entry is 1 which simply means the columns of k are the same as the columns of the identity matrix and hence k equal to i n that is b prime b into b b prime is equal to identity. So, the representation of b prime in terms of b and the representation of b in terms of b prime are inverses of each other. So, to get <coughs> the representation converted from B language to the B prime language, you represent the B basis vectors in terms of the B prime basis vectors. To convert the information in the B prime language to the B language, represent the B prime basis vectors in terms of the B basis vector. Once we have this, remember x b prime is b b prime into x b and x b is b prime b into x b prime. Let us look at a simple example. Let us look at the space v equal to f 3. Let us first take a basis B which is the usual ordered basis we always start with which is 1 0 0, 0 1 0 and 0 0 0 1. And then if you take any vector x, x 1, x 2, x 3 in F 3 then its representation in the B basis is just x 1, x 2, x 3. Let us now let take a new basis B prime which is u 1, u 2, u 3 where the u 1 is 1, 1, 0, u 2 is 1, 0, minus 1, u 3 is 0, 1, minus 1. Then we have seen that the representation of x in the b prime basis is x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 by 2 x 1 minus x 2 
minus x 3 by 2 and minus x 1 plus x 2 minus x 3 by 2. This we found out in the last lecture. So, we have the two representations. Now, how are they connected? To look at the connection, we must represent B in terms of B prime. Let us look at the connection between the basis B and basis B prime. Now, for that we look at the first vector in the B basis and try to represent it in terms of the B prime basis. It turns out we can see easily that half u 1 plus half u 2 minus half u 3 is u 1. Similarly, e 2 is half u 1 minus half u 2 plus half u 3 and e 3 is half u 1 minus half u 2 minus half u 3. Now, how do I construct the matrix B in the B prime basis? For that I take the first basis vector in the B basis represent it in terms of the B prime and put those components as the first column. The components now are 1 half, half and minus half. Similarly, we look at the second basis vector E 2, its representation in the B prime basis and put the components as the second column. And finally, we look at the third basis vector and look at its components and put it as the third column. We have half, minus half and minus half. Now, it is verify we want to construct x b prime from the known information of x b, we must have b b prime what is that mean in this case? Remember this was x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 by 2, x 1 minus x 2 minus x 3 by 2 minus x 1 plus x 2 minus x 3 by 2. This must be equal to the B matrix into x b is just x 1, x 2, x 3. It is now easy to verify that this holds. Okay. Just it is now a matrix multiplication verification and this is precisely what we mean. In this case what is b prime b that is very easy it is just 1 1 0 1 0 minus 1 0 1 minus 1 because we want to represent the B u 1, u 2, u 3, we want to represent u 1, u 2, u 3 in terms of e 1, e 2, e 3 which is a very simple straightforward computation and therefore, we get B prime B as this. Now, all we have to do is check that this B prime B we have got thanks B B prime that we have above gives us the identity matrix. It is easy to check this, it is just a matrix multiplication and we can verify that this is indeed true. So, thus in order to look at the connection between two representations coming out of two different bases, we must always look at the connection between the two bases. If you want to convert from the B language to the B prime language, you should convert the basis vectors in the B language into the basis vectors in the B prime language. Similarly, if you want to convert from B prime language to the B language, you must convert the basis vectors in B prime to the B language and that is why uh, that is how we construct this matrix for the transformation. So, therefore, we have the connection between these two represents, representations neatly contained in a simple matrix which stores the information about the connection between the two ordered bases. Now, let us have a further look a closer look at the representation x b.
which seems to be a very useful representation because it helps us to convert any vector in the vector space V into a concrete digitized form as x b. So, what we have is here is a vector space V whose dimension is n and here is f n. So, V is a vector space dimension V is n and we have f n. So, if you choose an ordered basis B for V and take a vector x it gets converted to a vector x b through a basis b. So, the moment you have an ordered basis b for v the base the any vector in v gets converted to a vector in x b in f n. Now, suppose we take two vectors then y will get converted to y b. So, we have this conversion of every vector in V into a vector in F n or you look at it x has been encoded as F x b, y has been encoded as y b. So, x has been encoded as x b and the encoding apparatus is the basis ordered basis b and y has been encoded as y b. So, we have these two vectors. Now, how good is this encoding? How good is this encoding? Now, we should investigate in fact, we do not even know what we mean by good what is meant by good, but let us look at this question carefully. Now, we have encoded the vector x into x b we have encoded the vector y into y b. Now, in the vector space v this vector x and this vector y can be added to get a vector x plus y. In the vector space v the vector x and the vector y can be added to get a vector x plus y. Now, since x plus y is a vector in v that can be encoded as x plus y b in the space f n. Now, we have done the addition on the v side suppose we do the addition after encoding x we did the vector x and the vector y and then added and then encoded instead we encode the x we encode the y and then add will I get the same that is the question. So, in other words if we add and encode or encode and add do we get the same answer if so it is good if we get the same answer it is good because then we know that the digitized version preserves additions if you can add this side you can add the digitized versions also. Let us look at this suppose x gets coded as x b x 1 x 2 x n this means x is equal to x 1 u 1 plus x n u n where u 1 u 2 u n is the ordered basis b. So, let us recollect b will always denote by u 1 u 2 u n. So, if b is the ordered basis for v x e goes to x b means x is equal to x 1 u 1 x 2 u 2. Similarly, y goes to y b or y is coded as y b which is y 1 y 2 y n this means y equal to y 1 u 1 plus etcetera y n. Now, if x is now we are doing the addition in the v side this is a vector in v this is a vector in v. So, if we add what do we get we get x plus y is x 1 plus y 1 into u 1 plus x 2 plus y 2 into u 2 and so on plus x n plus y n into u n. That means, we have represented the vector x plus y as a linear combination of u 1, u 2, u n. The moment we represent as a linear combination 
the coefficients are the one that are go that is going to determine the digitization. So, x plus y its representation must be x 1 plus y 1, x 2 plus y 2 and so on x n plus y n. But this is x 1, x 2, x n plus y 1, y 2, y n by the addition rule in f n, but that is the same as x b the first one is x b and the second one is y b. So, therefore, what we get is if you add and then represent it is the same as represent and then add. So, add and represent or represent individually and then add notice this plus refers to plus in V, this re plus refers to plus in F n. So, we have therefore, that the encoding or digitization or the identification of x in V with x b in f n through the ordered basis b preserves addition. That is you can add and identify or identify and add these two are commuting operations. Similarly, if you identify x with x b which is x 1, x 2, x n then that means x is x 1 u 1 plus x n u n that means for any alpha, alpha x will be alpha x 1 u 1 plus alpha x n u n for every alpha in f, which means alpha x the scalar multiple of x with the scalar alpha has this linear combination representation in terms of u 1, u 2, u n. Now, the coefficients will be the ones that will be used to get the representation and hence alpha x b will be alpha x 1, alpha x 2, alpha x n that is indeed equal to alpha times x 1, x 2, x n which is equal to alpha x b which means therefore, we get alpha x its representation is alpha times the representation of b. So, in other words what this says is scalar multiply in v and then get the representation it is the same as first get the representation and then scalar multiply in f n and both are going to yield the same results. So, that means the identification of x in v with x b in f n preserves scalar x b in f n of course, through the basis b preserves scalar multiplication. Thus, we have seen that this identification preserves addition and scalar multiplication. The addition and scalar multiplications are the bread and butter algebraic operations in the vector space and these are preserved means it preserves the algebra, it preserves the algebraic operations. So, thus x to x b through the basis b preserves addition and scalar multiplication.
the two basic operations in a vector space. This suggests or this leads us to the notion of linear transformations. This leads us to the notion of linear transformations, linear transformations. So, let us give a definition. Let V and W be any two vector spaces over the field F. Let V and W be any two vector spaces over the same field F. Then a map a function t from v to w which is such that it preserves addition and scalar multiplication. What does that mean? It preserves addition means if you add two vectors in v and then transform it should be the same as transform individually and then add for every x y in B. Notice that the plus here refers to the plus in V because x is in y, V, y is in V therefore, this plus is addition of vectors in V. The plus here is the addition in W because T x is in W and T y is in W and therefore, this is the W addition. So, this is what is meant by it preserves addition and it preserves scalar multiplication means take a vector x multiply it by a scalar in V and then take the transformation it should be the same as transform the vector x and then multiply by the scalar for all alpha in F and for all x in V. Once again notice that this scalar multiplication is in V and this scalar multiplication is in W because this vector is in x and we are multiplying by alpha. So, this is a scalar multiplication in V. This vector T x is in W because T takes vectors from V to W. So, this is a vector in W and we are multiplying by scalar a vector in W. So, this is a scalar multiplication in W. Such a if if you have a transformation from B to W which is such that it preserves addition and scalar multiplication then we say T is a linear transformation from V to W. Now, uh, at least for the, the L T stands for linear transformation. it is a linear transformation from V to W. Let us look at some examples. Let us make one remark. We have taken any two vector spaces V and W. In particular, if I take W to be also same as V, then we get a transformation from V to V which preserves addition and scalar multiplication. In other words, you are encoding V vectors as V vectors without destroying the addition and scalar multiplication. So, in other words, in particular, if V equal to W, then a linear transformation from V to V is called a linear operator. On V. So let's look at some examples of 
linear transformations and linear operators. Obviously, the whole definition was motivated by our identification of a vector in an n dimensional space through an ordered basis with a vector in a f n. So, let us take that as the first example. So, v an n dimensional vector space over a field f then b an ordered basis for v now we define a transformation t which of course depends on the ordered basis b so we'll write tb which take v vectors to fn vectors as how is it defined it takes the vector x in v to its basis representation t b equal x equal to x b and we have seen that this identification preserves scale addition and scalar multiplication and this is what motivated us the definition of linear transformations. So, we have seen if you add vectors and then identify it is the same as x b plus y b and which is the same as t b x plus t b y and t b alpha x is which is alpha x b we saw that this is the same as identify then multiply which is equal to alpha t b x. So, t b preserves addition and scalar multiplication hence t b is a linear transformation from v to f. So, thus every ordered basis on an n dimensional vector space produces a linear transformation from that vector space to f n. So, thus every ordered basis in an n dimensional vector space V over F produces a linear transformation T B from V to F. So, that is our first example which actually motivated our definition for linear transformation. Let us look at simpler examples now take V to be F 3 and W to be equal to F 2. Define a transformation T from V to W as follows. Now, what should T do? T should take vectors from V and convert them to vectors in W. Vectors in V are in F 3. So, they have three components x 1, x 2, x 3 and it should convert them to two component vectors. So, T must take a three component vector and convert it into a two component vector. So, let us say it is 2 x 1 minus x 2 plus x 3 and x 1 plus 2 x 2 minus x 3. So, this is the transformation the vector x if the vector x is x 1 x 2 x 3 it is now converted this is T x it is converted into a two component vector. Now, what is x plus y? x plus y is the vector x 1 plus y 1, x 2 plus y 2, x 3 plus y 3. We, we take x to be x 1, x 2, x 3, y to be y 1, y 2, y 3. Now, how does T transform x plus y? Let us observe this carefully. The way T transforms is it takes a three component vector 
and converts it into a two component vector. How are these two components formed? The first component that is to be formed is made up of all the three components of the original vector. It take two parts of the first component, subtracts it from one part of the second component and adds one part of the third component. So, if you want to do the same thing, we have to take two times the first component of x plus y. What is the first component of x plus y? x 1 plus y 1. From that, we must subtract the second component of x 2 and then add the third component of x 3. Then the second component of the transformed vector is formed by adding twice the second component of the original vector to the first component and then subtracting the third component. Doing the same thing, we get twice the first uh, the x 1. So, the first component is what we should take the first component of x plus y plus twice the second component. So, plus twice x 2 plus y 2 plus minus the third component of the vector you are transformed. So, this is what the transformation of x plus y. Now, it check now it is a simple manipulation to see or simplification to see that this is the same as T x plus T y. We know what should be T x, T x should be obtained from here and T y will be obtained from here replacing the x's by the y's. If we add the two, we get precisely this. Similarly, similarly T of alpha x is equal to alpha T of x. So, T is a linear transformation from F 3 to Now, we have chosen the values 2 minus 1 plus 1 here, 1, 2 minus 1 here. We could have chosen any a, b, c and another alpha, beta, gamma, it would have still worked. So, it is easy to check. Similarly, t from f 3 to f 2 defined as T of x 1, x 2, x 3 equal to a 1 1 x 1 plus a 1 2 x 2 plus a 1 3 x 3. So, certain proportion of x 1, certain proportion of x 2 and certain proportion of x 3. Similarly, a 2 1 x 1 plus a 2 2 x 2 plus a 2 3 x 3 is a linear transformation from F 3 to F 2. Let us observe this linear transformation little carefully. T x 1, x 2, x 3 is T x and the right hand side can be written as A 1 1, A 1 2, A 1 3, A 2 1, A 2 2, A 2 3 times x 1, x 2, x 3. So, if we call this as the matrix A, then this is equal to A x. So, therefore, if we had chosen arbitrarily A 1, A 2, A 1 2, A 1 3 etcetera, we get a matrix A which is a 2 by 3 matrix and that automatically produces a linear transformation on this space F 3 to F 2. So, the conclusion is any 2 by 3 matrix A o belonging to F 2 by 3 produces a linear transformation T from F 3 to F 2 since it depends on 
a we will write it as a as T a of x is equal to a times x and this can be generalized as follows written in this form it is very easy to verify that T a x plus y is a times x plus a times y because matrix multiplication is distributive and T a of alpha x is alpha times a x because scalars can be pulled out of matrix multiplication. The generalization is that if a is any m by n matrix in f n cross n then it produces a linear transformation T a from f n to f m as T a of x equal to a x. Now, remember that when we are talking about linear systems of equations, it is this sort of matrices that we were interested in. So, therefore, these sort of matrices are connected with linear transformations. So, the study of the structure of linear transformations will automatically give us a lot of information about the structure of the matrix A and hence the structure of the solutions of the system A x equal to B. We shall begin from our next lecture the study of the structure of such linear transformations on vector spaces. Mm -hmm.